Now this morning before I head out for a ride, I was kind of disappointed when I woke up. The, the sky was supposed to, this supposed to be a zero chance of rain today, and the sky was really cloudy. So I thought I'd spend a minute, the two this morning, explaining one of the things I'm going to be doing in the near future. And everybody that has followed the videos knows about Evil Twins. Evil Twins is, and, and it's a poor man's way of having two motorcycles for the price of one. What I did years ago, and Ray Straub helped me pick this bike up from Philadelphia, I bought an extra GS because I wanted to have, basically I have one bike registered historically, but I have two sets of bodywork. I could have two bikes, but this is a parts bike. It's not a, a runner, it's not a registered bike. So what I wanted to do is every year or so, maybe every two years, I just switched the parts. So one year the bike is the West Cooley bike, next year it's the stock bike. Well, that idea has worked well. Here's the other example. I didn't want to buy another FZR, so I have the original one that became the Ferrari, the red Ferrari bike, which then became this bike kind of a, a semi-evil twin bike because the bodywork was such in such bad shape it didn't even pay to try to save it. I would have saved it if it was in decent shape. Now I'm going to be doing something very similar to the R1. I'm not going to let the cat out of their bag now but we're going to be doing a little modification on that to basically make it kind of an evil twin. And that's the whole idea. The whole idea is once you register a bike and in this case the bikes are registered historically so they never have to be paid for again. Well, now if I buy another bike and it's not registered historically, every year I've got another. Uh, uh, uh. But if I have bikes, now I have four of them that are historically registered. And so if I, each year, I add a set of bodywork to them, I wind up with eight possibilities of bikes. Well, or seven, or whatever. You get the whole idea. Now I know other people, Scott, for instance, has, is thinking about this. I know Turbo Steve has... The, the 250 Ninja and the bodywork for that is so easily available that Luciano buys these, these Chinese bodywork for a couple of hundred dollars. You can buy bodywork for a whole bike. So, and I remember Larry did a late Larry Dettori, God love him, God rest his soul. He bought bodywork that had all kind of the, the stickers like it was a race bike and it was very cool, very inexpensive. The whole idea is to have the idea that you have two bikes but only pay for one. And then at some point in time, you switch the bodywork. I call that evil twins. Now we're gonna be doing kind of an evil twin to the R1 probably within the next two weeks. We need a day to do it. But that's gonna be a whole other video. I just wanted to think about this because it's such a crappy morning with the clouds out there. Uh, I'm gonna go have another cup of coffee now and think about it. Right now the sky does not look real promising. I'm not sure. I think we'll have another cup of coffee here. Then it's out where we're going. It's black. But sometimes it clears up in an hour, so I will give it an hour. And by the way, very soon this tree is coming down. He's already got a contract on, <laughs> a mafia contract out on that tree. It'll make us check in the weather a little bit easier. So back to the evil twin idea, and these of course are the two evil twins. And I do have the bodywork. This is a track bike, and I have some some bodywork. I may not have it all. I don't think I have a spare windshield, but that may become at some future time I have thought about. Since I even have a spare gas tank, it's usually the gas tank that's the hard thing to when you make an evil twin, it's easy to get the bodywork, the bodywork, the body inexpensive. And then you need to buy a gas tank or that thing Luciano has where the cover goes over the gas tank on the Chinese bodywork. Now another thing is, and, and I do this, I've done it many times. I, some days I feel like riding a cafe racer. This seat just goes on with two cotter pins, believe it or not, and, and a jack plug. It's so nice. You can have a cafe racer and then if you want to go for a long ride, you can put the nice big fat seat back on. And I remember reading an article years and years ago about the, the review of this motorcycle, and they said that seat is the most comfortable seat in motorcycling. <laughs> and they're right. But the cafe seat is kind of cool. You ride around, you get your cafe thing done, and then you come home. Two pins later, in a matter of three minutes, you can be riding a stock bike again. It's kind of cool. Now, when I bought this bike, it came with this customized seat. 
and it looks real cool and for a shorter person it probably would be pretty cool but when I've used it my knees got crunched I, I lost that two inches of foam and it's fun to put it on for a day again see this is a no bolt you can do this barehanded and you get this out of your system you come back and you put the nice comfortable seat back on and to me the seat is the most important thing in all of motorcycling people that sit on a log for 200 miles not at my age you know but it's so nice the whole idea is to be able to put the bike back to stock change it out to be some custom thing that you like or a different look a different feel different set of handlebars and see I like doing that constantly I to, to just have a bike for 10 years and not make any changes I, it wouldn't it wouldn't really excite me that much and it's really the best of all worlds on an evil twin because as you have one set of bodywork as an example this set of bodywork is on a bike I can be riding the bike the whole time I'm doing a second set of bodywork whether I buy Chinese bodywork if it's available or just buy used stuff and bondo it up and paint it well when I'm all done then I can have a uh, <laughs> well the best of all worlds it's it's really only a couple hours to switch it all out and on the FCR to change it from being the red Ferrari bike I always say we, we had five six years I don't know with the Ferrari thing duping everybody into thinking they were real Ferraris we've kind of lost the edge on that funny thing but anyway it was fun while it lasted but now we got I think one of the coolest FCRs around but to be honest I am a little prejudiced but again this whole restoration is on our channel for anybody that is really interested really dedicated to this kind of stuff and thanks to all the people that share their information on YouTube so very soon this is going to become an evil twin John Pothier is working on some some custom logos already we're working on some paint sketches working on making some custom gold paint for the trim and we want to emulate the racing paint job that I used on my bikes in the 70s and that'll bring back a lot of memories for me and be relatively easy to do so that's just some thoughts you can use if you you want to have a bike collection let's say you have two bikes or three bikes and you want to turn three bikes into six without buying three more bikes one of the choices you have do up some evil twins over the winter Anyway, just some good thoughts while we're waiting for this weather to clear up, which I hope it does very soon. Well, an hour later, it looks a little better, but it is still supposed to rain and thunder today, so this will be a short ride. And we're going to link up with Luciano with Choppers. That's the plan today. As I get the choppers, I got here before Luciano today. Boy, it's an eclectic day. There's some nasty clouds and some little little bit of sunshine coming through once in a while. We we've been pretty lucky all summer, but I'm not sure today. It's gonna be that lucky. I get the bike washed today anyway. as I look around all the little details on this bike wow did it pay off in the very end even those hand buffed wheels every step of this was a labor of love but here we are and hopefully we'll have it for many years to come Buongiorno! <laughs> you made it! Wow! How many of these you got now? Six or eight or ten? Holy mackerel! 
Too many, too many bikes. Only one ass and too many bikes. I can ask uh, uh, Nick if I can give a, a, a tablespoon of oil. This thing is low. So. The uh, uh, clutch. Oh, oh, oh brake part, yeah. That's an arm. I just. Fluid. I didn't pay attention, so. You didn't pay attention? Let's see. Boots, boots. Repaired. <laughs> Jacket, Jacket. We're safe. Yep. You ready to lead a ride today or you want me to lead? Yeah, you're, oh, ready you're not ready yet? Okay. What are these, Japanese mirrors? No. Well, they, they came on the bike. They want you to Oh, yeah, but these come with the bike, right? Yeah. These are not special. No, okay. No, they're Jim. When you got this from Jim? Yeah, it's cool. Nice bike. It's a good bike, baby. Let's see if we can keep it off of the guardrail today. <laughs> Let's keep them all off the guardrail, especially our asses. Luciano had a little bit of a hydraulic leak in the clutch and we're here super super early of course but it doesn't look promising for a long day I think we're gonna get rained on again oh yeah yeah ah the one the only <laughs> you know what I feel like climb every mountain look at a hill going up here Climb every mountain. Maybe two tablespoons. Two tablespoons. <laughs> so of course the people at Rockwell here know Luciano and he has he gets the best premium brake fluid. He's up there talking in the cold. We'll top this off for him. I don't want him walking up that climb every mountain twice. Let's see if we could drip some on the paint, too, while we got this apart. I gotta go for a manicure, but anyway, that fluid looks like it's due for a draining anyway. It'd be a good time to do it and bleed it everything when he gets home, but... The people at Rockwell, believe me, this is a great place to do business. Look at this, there's a snake by Luciano's gloves. That, that snake was trying to take a ride on your bike. 
yeah. a snake Ducati. Anyway, it is raining. Luciano's going to head back before me. I'm going to have another cup of coffee while it's raining. Oh, the bike won't melt. Ducati's handle the rain real good. All right, ride safe, my friend. It's starting to rain a little harder now. Time for another cup of coffee. And the one thing about the, the radar detectors, if you carry a sandwich bag with you, that's really the only part of the bike that takes a, uh, you gotta worry about. Or you could just take it off and stick it in your jacket. But, well, we're gonna hang out, have another cup of coffee. We'll have a cup of coffee for Scott. I'll be drinking this one for you. But when you're an exclusive member of the Perry's Club, you get to park under the overpass when it rains. Keep your bike dry. When you're not an exclusive member, you park out in the rain. And when you get home, you wax your bike. Uh, it probably, they said less than an hour of rain and we'll be done here. this played out it rained about halfway home nothing terrible but the biggest pain in the neck now is drying the leathers off and usually that's a 20 minutes with a hair dryer and cleaning up the bike oh, it doesn't look too bad but the wheel no matter what the wheels are always dirty and then Karen has a nice honeydew list for me <laughs> we always have a honeydew list anyway Hope you enjoyed the video and stay out of the rain and congratulations to Luciano back riding every weekend and meeting at Choppers.